Today's the day we're going to make over the workspace here in our garage. This is a space where I've made thousands of projects over the last six years, and I'm not exaggerating, it's been a lot of projects. And I've worked in a teeny tiny little area, and it's all been good. But this weekend, it's Labor Day weekend, and Hubby and I have decided, actually Hubby decided, we're going to make over this garage. So I'm gonna take you along on the journey, and I hope it inspires you for your space, that you can uh, redo your space so that you can make lots of creative projects for your home or maybe for your vendor booth. I don't know. Anyway, let's get started. If you've watched any of my videos, you have seen my workshop. I am not ashamed to show my workshop one bit because to me, it symbolizes the average person that goes out to work on their projects in their garage. And that's me. I'm the average person that goes out into my workshop slash corner of the garage that I have made so many items over the last six years in particular for our vendor booth spot. I'll, I'll maybe talk more about that spot later. For today, I've just decided, Hubby and I have just decided to redo the garage and get it organized because we have had a business change. I'll talk about that in a second. We just decided to make a little adjustment in the garage and use it for a similar purpose, but a little bit different. I'll still be doing projects out here, but we wanted to pare down some of the inventory that we've accumulated over the years for the projects that we have done. This is one of our inventory spots. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Let me show you where we are. We started late yesterday afternoon and we emptied out the garage. Well, I'll just show you. So for the past few years, six to be exact, this has been the corner where I have done our projects. My workbench has sat right here. You've seen it with my chop saw sitting on top of that workbench. I've kept all my paint supplies there. I reference my vacuum a lot and it's a huge shop vac. It has sat right here in this corner. And then our fridge and freezer units have been right here along this wall. So yesterday we started to empty out everything. You can see this looks pretty empty right now. And we're going to paint, but before we get to that part, we have to do a lot of steps. I just kind of want to walk you around the garage and let you see what we have. But I wanted to start off with the area that I've worked because really the area that I have worked in has been from this window over to that shelving unit and this area right here. And then I know the sun is harsh. It's early in the morning and the sun comes in in the morning in our workshop. And then I've utilized this space right here. And then of course, out in the driveway. I know that's a mess. I'll show you here in a minute. But I have used this space right here. I've pulled a lot of furniture right out there. And then just beyond this window is our house and the outdoor hose where I have done a lot of cleaning of our pieces and that kind of thing. So my workspace has literally been this tiny little area. That's what I wanted to point out is that you can get so much accomplished in a small area. And I just wanna be an encouragement in that area. But the main thing I wanna to do today is revamp this spot right here. I would like to improve the quality of my videos and I need a little bit of space to be able to do that so that you can better see the projects that we're working on. Anyway, this whole wall, the whole garage as a matter of fact, is going to be white and that's gonna help my video quality. I'm just really sure of it. Door that you see here, this leads into our breezeway. And in fact, you saw our breezeway in one of the videos that we show a porch sign. I'll be sure to link that video so you can go see the, the porch sign that we made and what our breezeway is like. You can see that. The back wall, I had a little storage unit way back there and I'm going to be moving that. In fact, it's that gray unit. Can you see it with all the drawers? That right there. So here it is. It's, it's a shelving unit. It's on wheels. It has all these little bins to keep things organized. And I only paid $10 for it. And the best part of this thing, it was one of the first things we bought six years ago when we started our vendor booth spot. The best thing about this, it was filled to the brim. All those, all those bins were filled to the brim. Painting supplies, hardware, rope, I, just all sorts of supplies that we used over the years. I'm going to keep it because it was so inexpensive. And it's gonna move over to my work, new work area. Then you can see here, this is our fridge and freezer unit. Steve pulled those out from where they were, where I just showed you. They're going to go on that back wall too. This, oh my gosh. But it's just because I've got it all piled up in the center. This is the pile of stuff that it looks like a mess right now, but honestly, I just packed it all in there for the sake of moving it away from the wall so that we can spray. He decided to put all of his stuff outside because he's got a lot of supplies that he needs. There's 
He does car washing, car repair. So we've got it all out there. You see our bicycles too. He's got a motorcycle. I mean, all these things take up space. There's the, the red compressor I use for upholstery. I've moved out. I'm outside right now. And this is his side. We call it his side of the garage. He did keep his two big tool chests. They're on wheels. So he just pulled them out from the wall space over here. He's got this big shelving unit he built, golly, 10 years ago. I mean, it's been here for a while, and that houses a lot of the bins that he needs for hunting and fishing, our painting supplies for household painting. That's housed there. My compressor goes on this shelf, so I just wheel myself over to this area when I need it for upholstery. He's got two big windows back here. And then that back door leads to our back patio. You've seen our back patio before. I I think I have a, actually a, a thing that I painted on the back patio, and I'll link that video as well. It was a little uh, thrifted step stool. He's fixing a spot back there and um, did a really good job of it. We're not too worried about things being perfect because we're gonna paint over this all white. We're not too crazy about it being perfect. We want it to be decent. It's not perfection. Alrighty, so that's the back wall. That's where the spot you see where he was sanding. We have two big shelving units up here that he built for larger bins that we don't get into a lot um and the fridge and the freezer you see is over there that's going to go on that back wall so we're going to have a whole new thing we also have a generator and that takes up space so we have to consider that you can see my my spot right there so i'm kind of in the middle of the garage right now and that is going to be the area where I'm going to be doing projects that I share here on YouTube. And for now, what's the next step, hon? Come here and tell me what we're doing next. Um, we're going to put a cover. So I think you had some vacuuming you wanted to finish. Yep. And then we need to tape off one window. Oh, yeah. We got one window. We taped off the last. We got all three taped up except for that one last one. Yes, we need to cover up our tools. This, yeah. The refrigerator. And then tell me, what are we going to do on the walls first so tell everybody what are we doing we're what do you mean we we that's the operative word i've isn't got it? my canoe loaded and i'll be fishing <laughs> in probably 10 minutes but so uh, wagner wagner yes yeah, sprayer and we are going to put a coat of primer on all the walls and if you hadn't noticed um i have been a diehard washington redskins or oh. now Commanders fan. Yeah. So that my neighbor, who is a Dallas Cowboys fan, was required to see that we painted it maroon and gold. So when we had the garage door open, um, he could look in and see the the colors. Um, That's funny. Prayer, yes. and we are going to prime, mm -hmm. and then we are going to paint. And I think the uh, idea is to just try to brighten things up. And I heard mm -hmm. you say earlier, we're not going for perfection. So a lot of the cabinet knobs and hooks and things like that, I don't care if they get painted. And, uh, you know, it's not necessarily high fashion. So. All righty. We're going to get to it. That was a task. It wasn't horrible, but it is starting to warm up. I don't know. It's around. Look at my watch, but I don't have it on. I don't know what time it is. It's around 11 and it's that time of the day that it starts to get warm. Anyway, it's done. The perimeters of the room are all vacuumed and emptied. So everything right now, I'm looking at it behind the camera. It's just all in this big heap. The perimeters of the room are empty and vacuumed and ready to be sprayed. And so we're going to prime first and then we're going to uh, paint so, and do the whole thing in white. Let me get back to why we're doing this well we're doing it because it needs to be done honestly we just need to give our garage a really good clean out so that's one of the main reasons that we're doing it the other main reason is because our business has actually changed kind of drastically in the last two months and we made the decision about two months ago. I did a Facebook Live, and I can't remember if I put it here on YouTube or not. If I did, I'll try to link it. But we made an announcement about changing our business model. So what we've done for all of these six years that we've been in business is that we've made projects, and we have sold them at a local vendor booth. We at one point even moved to two vendor booths. We downsized again to just one, but we enlarged that location. We've done a lot of custom work over the last six years, a whole lot of custom work, and it's been good. And along the way, I've been creating tutorials over on my blog, reinventeddelaware.com. Lots of photos, lots of step-by-step -step process of what we've done to get the projects that we have made. And We've literally in six years made thousands of upcycled projects. It's just, I have a picture of just about everything and maybe one day we'll have a little, a little review 
view of some of the projects that we've done, but I have photographed everything so that I would have a record of what that piece started out to look like and what it ended up to look like. But along the way, we started blogging about the tutorials of all these projects, and that blog has really grown. It seems to resonate with people. They want to know how we're doing what we do. Like a lot of people have been interested in that. So I've been very careful to put out a, a fresh tutorial almost every week for the last, I don't know how many years, at least two solid years. It's been a lot of blog posts. So you'll have to be sure to visit our blog for that. And you can sign up for an email to also, I'll put a link to sign up for the email down below because then you'll just I'll just send you when that when a new project comes out on our blog I'll just send it to you and that makes it kind of easy and then about we would periodically by the way we would post YouTube videos of just little snippets of part of the project that was easier to watch than it was to describe in a blog post anyway that's been kind of snippets here and there on YouTube and about a year ago we decided to get serious about YouTube so that's what we started doing we would write the blog post have all the still shots for the blog post and I would also record a video to go along with that so I could help people that were more interested on uh, in seeing a video over on YouTube so it, it kind of became a big thing because I was photographing for a blog post I was recording for YouTube I was completing the project and then we were selling it and we were doing this on a pretty steady basis it was a lot of work i'm not going to complain about work I, I love to work but it was almost too much for me to handle especially when you tied in when we tied in custom work there i just ran out of hours in the day and frankly energy i just ran out of energy so about two months ago we decided to close down our vendor booth and we'll no longer be selling the items in a vendor booth the way that we have for six years i'm still in the works of how we're going to do that because i've had several people here on YouTube ask me well what are you going to do with all these projects what do you do with them all so that's the next phase of our business I'm not hundred percent sure some of the projects that we'll do are going to be for our home well here's a funny story when I would advertise on social media some of the projects that we were working on here in our workshop it always seemed like people saw what was behind me like a stack of furniture and projects behind me and they would take claim to it they'd be like I want that dresser what color can I get it in? Well, there was a custom piece. So we did that a lot. And I also did a lot of advertising or my stories over on Instagram. I don't know if that's advertising. Honestly, I'm just showing up. I'm just showing up. And y'all would see, my followers over on Instagram would see things in the background that we had repurposed and they would be like, hey, I want that thing, is it for sale? Well, I said yes to just about everything. So we eliminated a lot of things in our home by just doing that. It was kind of crazy and fun and exciting all at the same time. But now I have a lot of projects I wanna do for our home. So part of what we'll be doing are projects for our home. And then when I get some pieces that I don't need for our home, I'll either be selling it locally on Facebook Marketplace or as a consignment piece in either our previous shop or in a couple of others that we have here. I'm kind of still testing the waters. That's a long story to say why we're painting the garage, why we're getting it organized. The main reason that we want to get it organized other than our business shifting and the fact that it needs to be done is because I do want to improve the quality of our videos. Now that's hard to do in a room that's orange. Like if you know anything about photography or video, orange just makes everything orange. So we're going with white in this room and it will hopefully bring a better quality to our images, excuse me, to our video as I record the projects that we're going to do over in that little spot. It's right behind the camera. And um, yeah, so the next step is to prime and hubby had to step away for a little while. Actually, he had to take a bunch of the stuff to the dump. This were, these were items that were just not even good to donate, no kidding. Not even good to donate, so we had a lot of that stuff. Actually, we already donated a ton of stuff several weekends ago. We did a major emptying of the garage because this is one of the locations. I have another spot, but we went through both of those spots that we got rid of a lot of our stuff, a lot of our inventory, and we took it to auction. You saw that video a couple of weeks ago. Was that last week? I showed you the auction that we love to go to, and we took those items down to the auction just so I could pare down the inventory because it was massive. The inventory in this room, in this garage, was massive. Anyway, next step is to prime, and we're gonna get to it. Alrighty, so how's it going? Whew. 
So far, so good. The, How's the um, coverage? I think it's doing well. And this mm -hmm. is a primer, so we just want to make sure it's on the wall. Mm -hmm. Probably a little more important with the color. Yeah. But um, I think it's going well. Now, what's your mixing ratio? And you're using kills, right? Latex yeah. or um, water-based. Water yeah, it is latex. It's water-based. And I'm probably seven-eighths of the product and an eighth water. Okay. Um, just trying to thin it out and make sure it sprays nice and even. And okay. So far, the Wagner Vizio is not having any... I'm sorry, Flexio <laughs> is not having any problem at all. And it's on low power and low... Oh. Uh, all the lowest settings. What challenges are you finding with spraying? Any? Angles. Uh, okay. trying to get its corners and then you saw under those shelves oh. mostly because I was low on paint and so it's got a paint's got to be at the at the uh, suck up tube and when you're low and you try to turn it to an angle it goes dry but, oh and isn't it, it, it that tube in there is angled differently depending on um, this is it actually let's look at that. and you can turn it I see that and so yeah, turn that just a sideways for us there we go yeah and I so see you can move that but um if Obviously, when you turn it back like that, mm. if you're low on paint, the paint doesn't get to the tube. Mm -hmm. So that's about the only issue, really. Okay, cool. And before I move on to my area, let me just talk about these rugs and why on earth I have huge wool rugs in my garage so when we built our house 20 years ago we went with solid hardwood floors in the interior of our home right out of the gate I knew I wanted those and my husband and my brother-in-law laid them together so I needed some really large area rugs this is the one that was in the living room this is the one that was in the dining room and those rooms needed to coordinate because the, it was very open it's even more open now but it was even open back 20 years ago and we ordered really nice solid wool rugs. Well, when we have revamped the house several times, of course, the rugs just were no longer in my color scheme. We went with a lot of jewel tones. You'll see the color of these rugs. This is all wool rugs. If I could figure out how to bleach them, I would. And I'm not going to say that I never will, although they're pretty stained now. I don't know if I could get that out. But these rich jewel tones were a very popular thing back in the 90s and I embraced it. I loved the color and I still love the color. I just like to change my home just as just as anybody else does. So we tried to sell the rugs, couldn't sell them probably because the color was just a little outdated after having them on our floors for about 15 years. And we decided to put them in the garage. Number one, my husband said what well, would be really good for the tires on the motorcycle. <laughs> I'm like, well, let's do it. So the motorcycle gets to sit on wool, which is kind of cool. And then when my business started, it just worked out. Actually, our car parked on that one for a long time when we used to have a car. But when my business started about six years ago, it this wool rug really helped because I was out here a lot and that's hard on your feet. Concrete is really hard on your legs. So this added some extra cushion. In fact, talk about stains. You can see that might've been an oil stain. I don't know. So I don't even know if I could ever bleach these out. But for now they serve the purpose of, of the floor space. I have it scooted way back so that in the winter, when I get to the fridge, when I have to run out here real quick to the freezer and I'm barefoot, my feet won't get cold, but also, Close to the door, I have a nice cement space so that when I'm moving the cart around that I just mentioned, in fact, you can see a little peak of that cart right there. It's on casters. It doesn't move around so great on the rug, but on the concrete floor, it moves around wonderfully, as well as this stool, which is one of my favorite tools in the workshop. I'm going to do a video eventually about my favorite tools in the workshop. This is one of them. That's on wheels. I can scoot around so easily. It has a little tray. Well, we'll get to that with my favorite tools. Anyway, that area right there is really great for moving around. That's why the rug is scooted so far back. So here's the new workspace. Let me back up a little bit. Yeah, so there's my workbench that you've seen many times in many projects. It used to be right in front of the window and now I've scooted it down. I'm gonna see how this works. The only thing I'm not sure about is the chop saw because when I have a little bag on it and the chop saw blows out a lot of dust and such this way, which is our door. When I'm out here in the workshop and the uh, when the temperatures allow me to, 
that door is open and I just don't want all that sawdust going into the breezeway. So I've got to figure out a plan for that. And I emptied everything on this workbench yesterday, took it all off. It was all spread out on the floor, cleaned it, vacuumed every little thing, got rid of things that I don't really use anymore. I'm looking forward to this space. And then I have another smaller workbench. Oh, by the way, my husband built this one and yes, it is on casters. You see those casters. And then he also purchased me this smaller one for me. And I'm going to link this one below. This is a wonderful workbench, especially if you only need a small area. It's, it's a brand name. I don't know how to pronounce it like Jorsberg or something. My husband put it on casters. I, I don't think that they came with it, but this little workbench is a wonderful workbench. And we'll talk about that in the video about my favorite tools. You're going to need a workbench that is small, movable, has a great amount of space up top. I'll be sure to link it below and stay tuned for another video of our favorite, of my favorite tools. So here's my new work area. Here are some more projects right here. Those, those are coming soon. Let's talk about this back wall. Right now it houses this thing, which is very handy to have near the workbench. It's a little organizer for screws and nuts and bolts and all that stuff. I have the fuse box on this wall. And then I have this board that goes across the top for hanging things. What my plan is, is to cover this wall kind of, well, my husband gave me the idea. Let me see if I can get over there and show you what he did. So that's what I'm going to do on this wall here. I'm going to go over and take more picket fence pieces apart. I have, I have a lot of picket fence stuff. And in fact, I have some projects that I've made and I have a project coming up soon for um, uh, using picket fences. Anyway, this whole wall, I wanna do that with picket, with pickets to make it like a backdrop for videos. I'm looking forward to that. And for the little fuse box, I'm just gonna make a little door out of pickets so that we can still access it and, but yet cover it up. Really looking forward to that. I am wondering, okay, maybe you can leave it in the comments. Should I paint the wall that section black first and then put those white pickets over top to make it look like there is, well, you know how they do that with like shiplap. They'll do that with shiplap They'll paint the wall black and then they put the shiplap over top. I don't know, maybe I'll do that, maybe I won't. Anyway, I still have some reorganizing to do in this space, and but for the most part, I'm done. I might try to work on this. I don't know if I'll get it done for this video or not. The week is filling up, it's Labor Day weekend. Today's Monday, Labor Day, and I know I gotta get my video out for you guys, and I. I don't know if I'll have time to do the project plus get the video out to you. So um, we'll see about that. That might be another project. Maybe for now, I'll just end it here. All right, so I have decided to hold off on the wall for now. I wanna dedicate a full video to this tutorial with the picket fence wall. We'll get to that another time. For now, I hope that this video inspired you to carve out your own little space so that you can create projects for your home or maybe you're a vendor booth owner and you need a space for that. You can do it in a small garage in a little area just like I've done for the last six years. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. I don't want you to miss any of the projects that we have planned. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.